Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. Your number one stop for stellar reviews of volumes, arcs or stories that us or yourselves choose. You can find us live every Wednesday on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch and the replay on all podcast networks. Take a seat, get yourselves and your opinions ready as it's time to join the herd. But first, please put your hands together for your hosts, Shane, Phil, Scott and Martin as they kick off this week's discussion. Ahoy hoy and welcome to the Nerdhead Comic Book Club. I'm this week's host Shane because it's my pick and I'm joined as always by the gorgeous Phil up here. Ah, you. Hey. The incredibly handsome Scott over there. Ah, oh, stop. Hey, yeah. And the stunning Martin up there. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasantries out of the way. Now Shane, you're you very pretty as well, by the way, I should say. Stop it. Stop it. Now read the rest that I sent you, Scott. What All else right, did okay. I say? Um, yeah. <laughs> As I said, it's my pick this week, and I have picked I Zombie from Vertigo Comics from 2010, Volume 1, Dead to the World. I've picked this because I was a massive show, a uh, massive show, a massive fan of the show, so I wanted to see what the comic was like. And this was written by Chris Robertson with art by Michael Alred. Colours by Laura Alred and Letters by Todd Klein. Um, yes. So, like I said, I picked this because I love the TV show and I wanted to know if, what the difference was because as we read books that have had TV shows, I always like to see what the difference is. And this is very different to the TV show, I have to say. But before we say hello to anyone in the chat, I will just quickly give you a synopsis for Volume 1 of iZombie. So I've written, I've written my own instead of just reading it off the back of the book. So I've got... Grave digger by day, grave robber by night. Gwen has little choice, but uh, has little choice if she wants to survive life after death. Being a zombie isn't all mindless shambling and eating brains. Sometimes it's even more boring than that. When Gwen eats the brains of a murder victim, she takes up the task of finding and stopping the killer. With help from her ghost best friend and her love struck wear terrier, the three will hunt down an ancient killer while avoiding hunters. <clears throat> and vampires along the way. Gwen is going to learn more than she ever wanted about what she is and what she might have to do. Mm. Does that sum the first volume up a little bit? Yes. Very much so. Yes. yes. <laughs> Let's go this way around and start with Scott. What did you think? Ah, Scott? Damn it. Somebody took it away. Okay, so this is written by Chris Robertson. Um, the only thing I've ever re read by him is uh, his latest God of War story, uh, God of War Fallen God. Um, it's kind of a prequel between God of War 3 and uh, the two, the uh, 2018 game. But anyway, um, that's all I've read from him. But I just look now at his uh, repertoire, his CV, if you will, um, and he's written tons of stuff. Tons and tons of stuff. Um, and some of it, we're, all of us are bound to have heard of. Um, he's written stuff, well, a lot for DC. He's done, like, Fables, Superman, Batman. Um, he's done uh, Just Superman. He's done a few things at Boom Studios, like do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. He's done stuff for Dark Horse, like uh, Alien stuff. He's done Hellboy stuff. He's done uh, Witchfinder, Stranger Things. He's done loads of stuff, right? Um so he's he's a very well respected writer, I, I I would say, based on what he's done and how many issues he's written for certain series is. And I can see why this was picked up as a TV show. Um Shane, you said earlier before we started this that it was five seasons. Is that done? Yes. Yeah. Um yeah, so five seasons of a TV show based on this which which this story, I Zombie is what, a twenty eight issue run? And so to get five seasons out of, uh, uh, and also I know you're going to say, but this, the show isn't based on the book, but anyway, five seasons off of a concept of a book, which I think is really good. So, um, 
But anyway, I am digressing because I can't think of what to say about the actual book. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I was expecting I the box to come in, like, but, <laughs> you know. Oh, God, help me. Um, yeah, this was a decent read. Um, this was tidy. It was quick to read. Um, the only thing that did really put me off was um, the art, um, the, the caliber of writing. Uh, really cool concept, and I enjoyed where it was taking me, but the art was kind of putting me off. Um, a little bit. It seemed a bit. Um, uh, the word that kept popping into my mind is flat in terms of the colours, um, but uh, but you know everything else. I really enjoyed the the character designs. I enjoyed facial expressions. Just when it came to the colouring, all felt a bit flat. Um, Fair enough. Over to you, Martin. <laughs> well, I didn't find the art too bad. It gave me that sixties vibe um, from quite a lot of the book. There was a few different sort of choices that pixelated 60s style look i really enjoyed that um i thought the writing was good as well it's fun playful but the premise was good um yeah i'm not going as deep as scott goes into but overall i found it fun enjoyable i didn't i had no issues getting through it good phil mm. see with the art i mean the all reds mike and what's what's the one what's her name laura laura like they're they're renowned for doing a lot of quality work for Marvel and DC. And I can't think of anything I've read or that they've done the art in. I'm of Scott. Like the art seemed to miss something. I, I don't know what it was. It, it was fine. But it, for for hearing who Mike Allred is and the kind of the way people build him up, I was expecting something better. Um I think <clears throat> we have a pattern uh, emerging with these uh volume ones of indie books like this is dc where they go but it's it's indie and that same of invincible they they don't really achieve a lot other than tell you here are the main players here are some characters we're going to play them all later but for this volume we're just telling you who they are and that's it mm. I, I i don't really know what the main the first issue by the way i thought was really good i like this is really cool it's set mm. it up she she eats people's brains she gets their memories of how they died it reminded me of chew a little bit yeah thought, yeah it's gonna yeah. go down that road but maybe a bit more serious but then it just didn't do that it, you know what i mean it just went a completely different way i was like okay this is something and i do feel like it has potential i think gwen's a really good character and she has potential but i, I just feel like that potential was not fulfilled in these first five issues in this first volume and there's a lot more to come yeah yeah, I agree. Um, great premise. Eat a brain. Find out who killed the person if they're a murder victim. That would have been great had the murderer just been someone else, like the B story, so that mm -hmm. it would have been someone she could have gone after, someone she could have caught, someone she could have brought to justice while dealing with the Amon stuff and finding out who she is and what she is. That could have been a separate story rather than have them combined. Because yeah, like you say, this story doesn't it doesn't have the arch, does it? it? Doesn't it doesn't have a beginning, a middle, and an end. This just is. This is her ghost friend. This is her wear terrier friend. There are hunters and there are vampires, and you know, let's just introduce everyone and get everyone on the screen, so you know who they are. So when you pick up volume two, you know we don't have to tell you. We can just get into the story then. So yeah, this is very much an introduction, and I totally get that, and it's a shame because it, it, it's a great mm. premise. Like, I love a murder mystery sort of thing. So if she eats the brains, get flashes of the brains, of the, of the memories, and she has to figure out who killed these people. Um, I'm not a massive fan of having the whole supernatural thing in this book. Going by the TV show, it's just zombies. In the TV show, there's no one else. So I was just expecting zombies. And then the ghost and the werewolf and the, the vampire show up. I was like, Sorry, where terrier <laughs> show up. <laughs> um, but with the art, I will say I did like the art style in this. It reminded me of Sabrina, the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Yeah. Um, in a way. Yeah. And I really like when it does that. I think Martin, when you said like the 60s with the dots, mm -hmm. you know, like dot matrix. I really I, I I think where I've read comics, like in you know, 70s and 80s comics, and they still had them. 
because they only had like four colors to print on it was just it just brings back that nostalgia for me and that's that's a personal thing and i completely understand if people don't get that now i i completely understand it but yeah that, we, at least we didn't hate it no one's got a terrible oh, name no, no oh, one's no. making fun of it so that's that's a good start but the fact that <laughs> We may not uh, be hear it, hearing it, but the book didn't give us anything to really mm. enjoy it. Surely that is a bad thing. Because again, if you look at it from like, spending your money every month on an issue, was it three dollars, whatever it's going to be, at the, whatever that was at that time, on this, you're five issues in, you haven't really got anywhere yet, you know. And this, well, kind I of, think, sorry, gone. Uh, and this is kind of perplexing me as well now because this and Invincible, like you said these aren't the typical like hook stories that we're getting and then we're usually used to the volume twos being um hey you know we've we've hooked you now now we're gonna really develop the characters and dive into these relationships or whatever but that that it kind of felt like they did that first with this but it's not hitting as hard because we don't have the hook like we have issue one of her eating a brain but then everything that else happens after that it's just yeah chucking people in the in the book just introducing us to everyone and then um yeah it's that kind of development and those relationships aren't really hitting us as well as they could if we had uh if this was maybe slowed down if they didn't have everyone introduced in issue two and three and four you know all in one hit like i'm sure i'm, I'm pretty sure there's one panel where all of the characters are there all the characters we've met in this entire story, just because just, they all bump into each other in front of a diner, don't they? They all cross paths. And I'm like, all the characters are right here now. But they could have they could have drawn out this story. They could have like drip fed it a bit more. And we could have had it focused solely on Gwen, you know, and Amon, you know, and uh the the ghost lady as well. Just have them a little thing between those three and just focus on solving that guy's murder and delving deeper into that. But we but we just get a bit bombarded, don't we, with all these other characters and these other uh, two storylines going on. I think they just could have stretched it out and we could have had uh, a more hooking volume one and then the kind of volume two that we're used to with the whole development side of things. Yeah, so you could have, you, know, you can save so many characters. Volume two could have been the werewolves and uh, the vampires yeah. and the hunters. Volume yeah. one is this guy's dead. Ellie and Gwen are going to figure out who did it. You know, along the way, she meets someone who's interested in her. They maybe meet at the diner and things like that. And then in the final mm. issue, she gets the flash of Amon's face and realizes he's the killer. There's your hook for volume two. She's been getting to know him the entire volume, finds out he's the killer at the end. But they tell us he's the killer straight away. So there's no mystery. Like, I like mystery in my murder mysteries. I know this isn't a murder mystery, but the TV show is. The TV show is, like, the body rocks up, she eats the brains, and then we work backwards and we have to figure out who the killer is along with Liv. Um, sorry, her character's <coughs> name is Liv Moore in the TV show. So she eats the brains when they come into the morgue, solves their murders. But in the TV show, she also gets their personality traits, which is a really fun um, thing that they've added that isn't in the comic. Mm -hmm. So if she gets the... Um, if she eats a brain of someone who's like an obsessive compulsive um, clean freak, then she turns into that. You know, one time she ate the brain of a klepto and she was just stealing everything in sight. And it was just, just these fun little character traits. But she just eats the brain and then they're talking to her, which is a completely different thing than I was expecting. Because he's, his voice is in her head all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, that was, that was quite interesting, that though. You know, I, I was thinking like, Right, so he's eaten. She's eaten a brain, but now, like, she's not only getting his memories. She's getting, she's eaten consciousness, essentially, and that bit was like, it's kind of cool. And I was trying to wrap my head in like, obviously, how it worked. But then I was like, okay, don't think about it too much because this is about a zombie who's eating brains to survive <laughs> once a month. So I was like, okay, dial it, dial it back a bit, Scott. Don't, don't get too deep into this. Um, <laughs> But yeah, but that was interesting, you know, having that consciousness, you know, and it felt like it felt more like urges more than actual conscious thought. Like, you know, ah, my family, ah, you know, the murderer, ah, you know, stuff like that. So it just felt like um, like fight or flight responses. Yeah, there was a part where 
when Gwen went to speak to the was it his wife at the cemetery, and mm. like, you can tell she didn't really want to, but like that yeah, urge yeah, to go yeah. over it and say hello to her, and then of course he was like, "Thanks for that, Fred." Um, so it's, it's like there's more control there than just like you're mm. saying never consciousness. Um, so I like, but again, they could have done more with that. Could have, I think they could have done more. Done, want somewhere different with that as well. Um, I think the, the main thing we, we all agree with is that this volume should have just been solve Fred's murder. They then discover he's a murderer, and then I don't know, end it some other way. Yeah. And then you know maybe cross paths with the guy Horatio, and then that's volume two, Vampire Hunters. Horatio's there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, and then you've got think... volume three where she finds out her friend's a werewolf. You know, you can slow things down, you don't have to zap Snyder everything, you don't have to throw everything at the screen and see what sticks. Do you not think if they made this first volume about a murder mystery, this would have quite closely resembled um, Resident Alien that we read recently? <laughs> Quite scarily yeah, close. You know, totally we introduce the, you know, we <laughs> introduce a character. We don't find out too much about their backstory. Mm. They end up coming in to solve a mystery. And to the end then, of the volume, you find out what's gone on and then leaves you with that. But, but that's okay. So, comic tropes, there's there's nothing original anymore. Just just do something different. Same thing, but do it differently. I think, I think this has potential to be good. I, I like Gwen. I think she's a really intriguing character. I like her attitude. Um, I can't say so much for her friends. They were quite boring in a way. Vanilla. Um, yeah, vanilla. That's it. That's the one. Yeah. But she was cool. Um, I kind of wanted to see more of her do, 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 do something. I thought she didn't really do anything. She just, you know, she went to the diner, had some coffee, then went to some guy's house, talked about where he came from. He's an, he's an ancient Egyptian. Okay. I eat brains. Like, but there's, there's enough there to like think she could be cool. I don't know why, but just give us something more, you know. Oh, I want to know where she came from and who that blonde boy was at the diner that she recognized. I'm thinking that's her brother or something. I don't think it's like a past. Yeah, it yeah, is right at the end. He says he's looking for his sister, doesn't he? Oh, she I missed that. that. But like, I wanted more of that. I want her to, because she does, obviously doesn't remember or she's forgetting her previous life because she's not yeah. eating enough brains. She's not killing any innocent people. Um, before we get into the writing, though, should we have a look at Smart? Yeah. He is. Have a look at our pages. We'll start with Martin. We'll go this. We'll go clockwise, I think. Martin? Why you pick this I, f I felt like I was in touch with my inner feel in this, with this pick because I like the rain. I like the way that when she went to cut the head off, you got the lightning strike. At the same time, I just built that, um, the mood of her going for that first, well, showing us that first time of her eating brains. This is to say the following page is her eating brains. So, but I thought this page had more emotional, um, you know, emotional touch to it. Yeah, like I did screenshot this to potentially be one of my picks. And it's the lightning, it's the rain, it's the, it's the sound effect. Like you can almost like hear mm. her chopping through a skull to get at the mm. brains. I just thought it was really cool. And the rain effect is really cool. I love the way she uh, describes the taste of the brain. Hmm. No, she was like, it's like that, but worse. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Uh, it's like um, motor someone oil. else's vomit. Motor oil motor or something, wasn't and it? And someone else's vomit. <laughs> I will find it. I'm going to verify. <laughs> While you do that, we'll have a look at Phil's page. I'll be brutally honest. I, I'm I'm surprised Moore didn't pick this. I thought this was a shoe to be picked by everybody. Because this is where she's with that guy. What's his name again? Aman. Like a, a man. And he's explaining about you know him being in the past, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he literally walks through the panel, then becomes part of the story of the panel while she's looking in. And then still continues to tell the story all through time. Here he, he is back at the Crusades period or whatever. And then obviously, I don't know where that is, the bottom left, uh, wherever, in Wild West or something, whatever. And then the modern day, like, stepping off a helicopter, and he comes back mm. through the panel again and joins her in the next page again. I just thought that was really cool, really clever the way they've done that. Um, it's cool, and I would have picked it if it wasn't 
blurry. Yeah, that that that's looked that's, like it was done with pastels. That's the downside of it. But yeah, I think again the previous kind of image. I think when he was talking about the past, I think it was also quite low key colors. They didn't pop because obviously in the history, it's maybe it's their way of saying this is in the mm. past. Maybe I don't know. I just thought it was a really cool concept. Um, I love the way Liv is standing in between the panels. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Gwen. Oh, yes, <laughs> Gwen. Gwen. Yes. Um, I, am I the only one? But is is there a line missing from this page? Um, oh, because, I felt like that. Yeah, because he speaks in the top middle panel, and then in the bottom left panel, he oh, replies yeah. to her, and she, but she hasn't said anything. Yeah. It felt like and something I, was missing. I even turned back a page. I was like, oh, what? Are I you? did. Yeah. It definitely felt like she was mm. supposed to say something in that top right panel yeah. and they forgot to put it in because he's re definitely replying to her. Mm. Yeah. But, it was it weird. Was, but yeah, great page though. It's a, a really good intro to the character, how he's travelled through time like that. Um, mm. My page, I picked this one. Um, I really like the art on this. Um, this is when she eats the brains and she gets the memories. But I love the way her face has gone half Romero and she's still got her half human face. Um, and then the memories of the killer down the bottom. He's got his mummy bandages on and his white leopard that he was oddly um, close with. I don't want to <laughs> say too much, but I, I think that's like a were leopard. Having... Mm. I hope so. I hope that is a person, the way he was talking to it and inviting it into his <laughs> boudoir. <laughs> but yeah, this I just was, really like this. This was going to be my page pick as well. Um, I did like this page because it gives you a bit of everything this book has, you know, with, with, with the nice dramatic effect in the top. You've got, you know, the middle section, which is brilliant with the Romero face and also a nice black and white with that 60s vibe to it as well. It just... Yes, a love, lovely play, Shane. Yep. And top right, where you just see she hates what she's doing. You do feel for her. She doesn't want to do that. She doesn't want to dig up bodies and eat their brains. It's so sad. I'm pretty um, certain as well that that middle part of your page there, Shane, and correct me if I'm wrong, may be the cover of the Omnibus. If that's the cover they choose, I think. Um, okay. Could, could be wrong. Um, I do know she does have a half zombie face on the cover of issue one. So it mm. might have been inspired by that scott what your page oh yeah your page ah okay yeah i like <gasps> this one uh this is kind of uh towards the end of the book where gwen is is it is this the guy is this horatio is that horatio yeah yeah so uh yeah they go on a little like walking date where they're like uh we're walking like you know we don't have anywhere a destination we're just going and we're just finding out that we love everything and hate everything and that's the same and Oh my god, this guy's amazing. Um, but what, what I liked about it is, um, I don't know how to explain it um, for people on the podcast. Uh, if people on the podcast know the the iconic Tom Taylor Nightwing issue, you're going to know what I'm talking about, where it all just flows, you know, the character just flows into each panel and into each page. And it's just like that. Um, but I like it, you know, every each iteration of, of this couple. They got different poses, you know, uh, and their facial expressions are different and, uh, and and I'm enjoying it. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, oh, okay, maybe a little joke was popped there. Okay, maybe something, you know, anecdotal or, you know, um, philosophical or something serious was said here and stuff like that. And I enjoyed it. It was quite clever. <clears throat> open for your interpretations you do not confirming yes. anything that was said oh yeah but the reason Mine why I interpretation the reason why i do not like this page is because they clearly don't like me because i do edge forward at stoplights and i also have the habit of saying i need this and that's when they're they're, they're, they're passages down the things <laughs> that they hate they hate people who edge forward at stoplights and who say i need something instead of i would like something that's me <laughs> Unfortunately. It is. This was on my list. I was going to pick this page as well. I do just. I love a page where they just travel. There was um, a great page in your Black Widow book, Phil, that you picked a while back, where she traverses the page, and it's all just yeah. 
done in a fluid motion. It's just, mm. it's so clever when it's done right. I like it done in the comic. I think it looks really well. And Scott referred to the Nightwing. And not only that issue of Nightwing where Bruno Redondo does it through the whole book, they do they do it quite often through the Nightwing series. And it's always done really well. It always looks really cool. And do you remember Scott too? Was it uh, Better A Bill by Daniel Warren Johnson done something similar? I just uh, love the way they do that. They tra traverse through like a building or something, whatever. It's just really cool. I remember the book. I don't remember that bit though. He was going through the spaceship oh. from the bottom up the steps. And oh yeah, yeah, that was cool. We'll read that one day, maybe for the nerd herd guys. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll um, have to have like just... a We Hate Shane month. Just pick <laughs> DWJ books. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's no, coming I... around. He quite liked the, yeah. the previous oh, one. That's true. Yeah. It was that's only the true. Wonder Woman one I had an issue with. When we re uh, read the... Um, extremity, extremity was Extremities. I really liked that, didn't I? Yeah, it was only Wonder Woman. So you got me yeah. already. Only took, well, only took an extra book and you got me. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Can we just say a quick hello to people in the chat? We've got Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for joining. I hope you've read along. And I hope you've got a pick for next week's Herd's Choice. Don't forget, at the end of this week's episode... If you're watching live, you can pick a book and we will put it on a wheel and we will select a book to read next week. And you can also win some goodies as well. And we also have. We also have Warlord in the chat. He says, hello, I love the iZombie show and did not realize they made a comic book first. Definitely have to read it. Yes, I, too, love the love the TV show. Um, you're in for a shock because the book is completely different. <laughs> We, you have a ha habit of this, Shane, where you're picking comics based on, based on TV shows, or sorry, that were source material for the TV shows. Do you like, obviously, Resident Alien? Um, yes. I don't for in principle. And I think the theme we've had so far is that the books haven't lived up to the show. That, that's the thing we've kind of come to the conclusion that we've when things are spout face and maybe done the wrong thing when mm -hmm. we watch the TV show first, what spoils yeah. The comic is like the boys was another one i think that we like the comic and it's fine yep. but the tv show definitely transcends what the umbrella comic academy yeah yeah academy yeah no i think the only successful one that i can think is lock and key i enjoyed both the comic and the tv show for that they're i think both, they were both, both done different. equally yeah but but both done equally well Oh, we, you didn't like the TV show? Or the but, well, for anyone listening on the podcast, I'm just literally shaking my hands. Like, no, I watched episode one of Lock and Key and just went, not watching this ever again because they used a key in episode one that doesn't <laughs> exist. I was fuming. I was like, instantly, what, 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 they're making stuff up. The, the what mirror key, key did they use? The mirror key, yeah. What's wrong with the mirror key? It's not in the books. It's a great key. You can trap people in the mirror it's world not source with material. It. <laughs> oh well, they create their own key by the end of the season, so you oh, don't want to ruined. To be fair, with um, <laughs> Lock and Key, I think I watched the TV show first before we read the book. I think, um, and I I only watched the first season of it. I didn't carry on, but I've heard it sucks. No, I, I really like, enjoyed I it. Is, is, is it finished? Yeah. Yes. Three seasons. About time. <laughs> <laughs> I've not had the pleasure. I've not watched anything yet. I've not read the books either, so I'm going to stay clear with the TV show and just the, read the books. The, the TV show, the first season, we probably liked it, but it is very different. Than the, it's more kind of, I don't want to say family friendly, because that's not true, but like it's not as dark. The comic's quite dark. The TV show isn't as dark, but it's still well, entertaining. I mean, the, the TV show starts off with their dad getting brutally murdered in front of them. I mean, it's not a happy... Yeah, that's a key element of the story. <laughs> that, that needs to happen. But again, it's still darkish, just not as dark as yeah. the book. Yeah, no, I agree. It's very Netflix-friendly, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's a yeah. great point. But why do we have this problem where we can, you know, we can transfer a novel to a movie and people prefer the novel, but when a yes. comic book does it, it's it's worse? I don't understand. It shouldn't... It would be the same, but then well, I think with a novel, you lose a lot when you transcend it to a movie. Like, um, The Shining, the book of The Shining is just uh, the film is fantastic. I love The Shining, the book is just another level because you are reading his thoughts as well. Um, but with a comic book, when you, you have your storyboard, all you have to do is copy and paste, yeah. and when they go outside of that, people are like, No, I don't want that, you can't do that. You have but to I, stick to the comic. 
but I think for like Lock and Key and, and Warlords mentioned like Sandman, I feel like mm. yes, the comic book as good as it is, like they need more. They can't if they if they for example, if this volume one was season one of I Zombie, a TV show, it would fall flat and they wouldn't make a season two. Do you know what um, I mean? So this yeah. this is more like episode one. So they yeah. need to have more stuff from that. Like, it's like you're saying with a novel, they can take things out and leave it out and people get offended. And then for this, like the lock and key, they're offended by adding keys and the lock and key. Like they have to add stuff in to fill it out a bit yeah. more. And maybe that's why it's better because you're getting more out of it. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's good to keep in mind as well that, you know, Shane read this five issues in an hour. You know, that is one episode, you know, <laughs> so it, it needs to be bulked out, doesn't it? it it's got to be like, it's all about pacing. So if I just went right one issue per episode, uh, then each episode is going to be like 10, 15 minutes. That yeah. kind of thing. So uh, exactly. it's all about pacing. They have to expand it. They have to add stuff in. But there was no need for the mirror key. There was no <laughs> need. Was There's, there are millions of keys. <laughs> Maybe if the creators of Lock and Key were um, more like detailed in their book maybe they had companion books you know like lord of the rings for example there's 20 I have books read all, of them. all about middle earth but i think that's the thing the thing is with an, with a book it's like you know three four five hundred pages so they take stuff out like you say they take stuff out for the movie but they still keep the author's voice taking something out the author's voice is still there as soon as you start adding stuff that's not the author's voice anymore like they didn't get the writer to write the tv show and they don't for most of them they have a, a creator to do that so the the voice is gone the, the premise is there the basis of the idea is there and the characters you fall in love with in a comic book when you see them on the screen they are totally different it's because it's not mm. the writer's voice. You need they need to bring the writer over into the writer's room and say, would your character do this? Would your character do yeah. that? I or go they... like I zombie and just completely change it and only yeah. take the premise of a zombie eating brain solving murders. Yeah, like th th this this instance for this series is a totally rare experience. I think you know all the other things we've read are linked, but this is just all right. I'll take the concept and I'll just run with it. I'll do whatever I want. I'll like. I, I like it's 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 probably not like mental to say that the writer of the show didn't need to read the the comic or maybe even didn't read the comic and just went here's a concept do what you like. I don't even think he read the Wikipedia because, like I say, he doesn't even use the character's name. So her name's <laughs> Gwen in this, and her name's Liv in the TV show. So he took he took nothing from this apart from a mental. zombie eats brains. Hmm gets memories, solves crime. That's it. He literally, that's an elevator pitch, and that's what he got. So someone ran to him and said, I've just read this comic, and what's it about? You've got six seconds to tell me. And he told him, and he went and wrote an entire season based on those six seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think it worked it's just, out. They got five seasons. I think it's just made me now more hesitant when I come to checking some of these books out off of TV shows. If I see a show and I really enjoy it, I think I'm going to look at it digitally first prior to considering picking anything up because so far the track record isn't favourable. Yeah, you know? it tends to happen a lot. Like I've Outcast, um, The Walking Dead, um, Resident Alien is another one. Like just disappointments when I've gone from the TV show to the comic book. So I think this is my last pick that's going to be based on a TV show. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> yeah. See, it's one of those things that I am kind of one of those. I'm not really, that's a lie. Like, I'm not one of those ones that needs to read the source material before like a movie or a, a TV show comes out. I don't have to. But I feel like for ones like this, maybe we should. Like, maybe I should because like, you, you'll get a certain level that this coming was okay, but then the TV show is going to blow me away. Whereas mm. going back the other way, it's just, it's just not it's not as enjoyable as one would think. Because um, again, this is a good idea, some intriguing characters, but it's I haven't seen the show by the way. But I just imagine the show will be so much better than what this book is. And I am surprised that they actually got a show based on this. But then, as you're saying, that they just took the concept of the you know crime solving brain eater rather than 
the actual vampires and the ancient Egyptians and whatever else. And so I think sorry, go on. I was just gonna say all they took was that and the name. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And this person got paid handsomely, I'd imagine, for that. Um I hope so. It didn't matter so, what the stories were like, just you know. What are we what are we thinking about the writing of the book? <laughs> <laughs> Skip back on track. <laughs> I, I, I the first issue, as as I say, I was talking about the whole concept idea. I, I liked it. It was really good. Mm, yeah. You have her going trick or treating for pals, the ghost and and, and the the wear terrier, and happens to go to the house that's killing a man who then she eats the happens to eat the brains off and then discovered that he's been murdered. That's really cool. Like and it was a really good way to fit all that into one one issue. But then from there it just took a different direction that I just wasn't it was hard to kind of think, okay, where's he going with this? Like what's actually mm-hmm. happening? Um and I just think uh, I feel like it's 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 gonna be falling flat based on the hype I got from issue one. I think, and this is a problem I've been having um, with quite a few of these indie volume ones. Um, it's not their fault. It's the fact that we're reading them as a volume, because I would have enjoyed this a lot more reading it monthly, you know, waiting, expecting the next issue, and then having it be just a constant thing that's just on my rotation and I'm just reading it once a month. But when you're then given five issues out of context, it's, it's it kind of is out of context because it's just the first five issues of a run. It isn't a complete story. It's, it it happens with quite a lot of the indie books we read. They're not designed for volumes, are they? You know, whereas a DC or a Marvel, you get a four issue story that's then put into a trade for you to read that whole story and you get your start, your middle and your end court of owls, you know, things like that. But this is just, here's, we need to bring out a volume. We can't wait too long. So Here's your first five issues. Here's your second five issues, and it just it feels out of context and yeah. out of. I feel like out of I, I agree. Like what, when we come to the end of the show and we give our scores, like whatever they may be, but say they were low, it's not a true reflection on the I Zombie comic book. Like it's literally only this volume because this is twenty eight issues. I would imagine if we read all twenty eight issues. Would we'll definitely feel different, and that's obviously why Scott, you create the the scores for like volumes one, two, and three of a complete series yeah, because yeah. you're getting a better overall picture. This is this is that, and it's like you're saying, if this was Marvel or DC into volume one, you're getting your start, middle, and then end. And then volume two is another new adventure. So maybe indie books, it's hard at the end itself to have in that as a volume one, but there are indie books out there that will have that hook, and we've had it like. I mentioned Chew before. Chew was a good story. It, it made us want to read more. There's other indie books we've read. Like it has the hook. This didn't have the hook. It was written well. It was fine. It plodded along, but didn't. You know, do I want to read more? Kind of, but I'm no rush to do it. I'll maybe do it if we do a sequels month or something. Yeah, this is a nerdhood read more. This isn't a yeah. uh, go off and read more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I yeah. Today, sadly. Yeah. Whereas me, for last, you know, when we did Invincible, today I received, like, we read the first four issues, but today I received the first three Ultimate Collections, <laughs> holding the first 35 <laughs> issues. So that's something I wanted to read more. Yeah. Yeah. But and this isn't that. But I think Shane's right. You know, with these indie books, you, you need to have a bigger batch. And I think it was the same you said about Invincible. Invincible's the same. I don't think we got enough from Invincible to really give it an honest score. You'd need mm. to read that Ultimate Edition Volume 1 to give it a real intro to the series. I think this suffers from that same problem. Yeah. It, it, Some books it just aren't meant to be read in trade. I know it, that sounds it, really weird yeah. to say, but... It makes you wonder about the publishers. Like, Then why do they do it that way? Like... And what I mean is, like this, this is obviously like uh, five issues, but it was, you know, it's the money you're right. Uh, for our listeners, Scott was uh, rubbing his fingers together, money. But um, I just, I feel like they know the story isn't that good in a trade. So maybe, like, instead of like a, a five issue trade, maybe like a maxi trade with like 12 issues or something, give us the first 12 issues. Cause it was quick enough to read. We could have easily read an extra five issues, maybe, or so. 
uh, for tonight, it was fairly breezy because there wasn't a lot there to really take in. And like Scott, you also get a thinking book. This didn't really offer that. There was no real thought into this um, in terms of made you think about stuff. And then, I don't know, now we're talking about it, I feel like it is a bit flat as a story as well as the art. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. I've like literally deflated my opinion yeah. like i was i finished it and i was like oh that was fun that reminded me of the chilling adventures of sabrina you know you could imagine a crossover with that i was like yeah this was fun breezy fast and now we're talking i'm like okay yeah this is just literally a who's who of who's going to be in the next 28 issues of this book yeah yep. and we'll get we'll get to some stories First, this is the musical intro introduction where it says, you know, da -da -da, starring Gwen, starring Ellie. And that this is what this book was. It was the intro to the book. Was the... <laughs> the thing is, I know before before the show, we said who picked this up, which which network was it that picked this up? I did actually check it. It was CW. And if CW wouldn't stick with the, you know, friendly happy check out my friends who's a vampire who's this who's that if they didn't want to take it on board you know mm. that doesn't say a lot really because that is the cw isn't it very yes, much but this was a this was a good you know eight years ago so cw did have some better shows back then <laughs> that was the show about eight years ago roughly i think about well, that where, got where was i i never heard of it I, I i genuinely did not know there was a show for I mean, it's been finished, finished a good few years. Yeah, it was. It's. I think it started around about the same time, actually. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it started the same year as Agent Carter. You know the. Um, I love that. Peggy Carter nice. series. I'm pretty sure it started the same year as that. Whenever that was. Uh, but yeah. So um, yep. I'm. Did anyone find the book like? All right, I found it quite charming, but I did laugh out loud one moment and it was quite early on when they went to the house and Amman opens and they're trick-or-treating and he just gives them some old crap and they leave Ooh. and the dog has got breath mints and Gwen has got an umbrella. Mm. I did laugh when she pulls the umbrella. I wanted to say something about that actually. I'm really glad you reminded me. Um, those few pages about the Halloween scene is only in the trade. It's not in the issues. Oh really? Um, yeah, because I started reading the issues uh, by accident, and I was like, oh, no, I, I like to stick to the trade. So I went back to the trade, and those first few pages weren't in issue one. No, as you've said, because I read the trade, and that, that scene happened, and then it felt like a natural break. Yeah. yeah. And then I thought that issue one was quick, but that was obviously like a prequel or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. it was a little prologue, yeah. Um, I fun fact. where that Ooh. popped up. Yeah, that must have been in like a free comic book day issue or something. Or a... I, I... I loved her costume as well, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, literally three pages, yeah. Literally yeah. three pages, and that's all it was. <laughs> and her friend Ellie was dressed as a ghost. She literally had a sheet over yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. 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 All very apt. But yeah, when she pulled the umbrella out, and then Ellie's like, I got a rock. <laughs> he just gave them whatever <laughs> crap he could get his hands on to get rid of them. I thought that was quite funny. And I thought the tone was going to then stick to that, and we were going to just have a comedy book about a zombie yeah but then it just the tone just drops as soon as you get back into issue one so i, I agree it, it lacked the comedy it, it lacked yeah. something to, to kind of make you laugh out loud because as we're talking about this and we're feeling a bit deflated now like regurgitating it so like had they had more comedy that's something extra that we could have enjoyed but i'm struggling to find what did we actually enjoy i don't actually don't know what i enjoyed now i liked i liked gwen that's it and they had enough characters I... to do the comedy. They did. <laughs> and the, those, the, those two boyos, the, I forget the name, the, the friends of Scott. Um, before uh, I turn yeah. Into Tan like, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tan and... Had... Uh, yeah. Come on, they, they, had they, they had potential to have the comedy moments. It could be the bulk and skull of the story type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I can and tell you what I nice. enjoyed. Go on then. Yes, please. Oh, oh, Something yes. Posit positive. Positivity. Woo. Um, so uh, I liked how, you know, when when Gwen eats the brain and, you know, you start to you start to learn, OK, she's getting this guy's memories. But what I was enjoying about that was throughout the story, it was getting progressively darker. You know, first of all, as a reader, you're feeling sorry for this guy. Oh, OK, he got murdered. 
damn. And then, you know, oh, cool, okay, Gwen's now going to try and solve the murder. And then as you're going along, you're like, Ooh, do I do I want Gwen to so- help this guy? Do I want Gwen to solve this murder? Uh, stuff like that, because he was a murderer himself. Um, and then the other bit I liked was, again, brain-related. I liked how it was affecting her. You know, she was doing the paintings. She was, you know, having these, like, flashbacks um stuff like that and she was uh basing her actions off of the urges of uh fred's you know memories and his instincts and stuff like that um that was cool that's what i enjoyed you mentioned the paintings um did did anybody else get sick and tired of the waitress asking for new paintings like what's dixie yeah we dixie like what's her story there's something there There's clearly something wrong with Dixie because you can't mention these paintings. Like, what are you? Like, what 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 are you getting at? Um, th- that's what I liked about the book. There's enough intrigue of certain characters that will make you want to explore more of it. And you're right, I like the way that it kind of it controlled Ellie. What I will say about Fred, like clearly, well, it shows that obviously him obviously murdering somebody. However, there's enough of a question mark over that because I don't think even uh, Gwen fully believes that he was a murderer. He still can, She still wanted to help him. You know, I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe the memory's clouded somehow. Maybe um, a man or whatever's gone into her head. I just, I'm not convinced that he did kill this other girl. I don't know why. Because they kind of, they, they portrayed him like a really nice family man. He loved his wife and his, and his son and he missed them and so forth. And then he also he's a murderer. But there's still something there. I think, well, you made, you made us like him for some reason. We well, like, had the car accident, didn't they? It was to explain the difference between the oversoul and the undersoul. So he had the car accident and he lost his undersoul. Right, okay. I like that. I like that page where we had all all the different, okay, if you have an undersoul, but you don't have an oversoul, then this happens. If you have vice versa, then this happens. But then if, if an oversoul... Uh, comes into your body, then you're then you're a werewolf or a were terrier. But then otherwise, you're just a possessed person being possessed by a ghost. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, that was. Good. I wrote I it down that. because it was just such an interesting way to bring all the characters together. So, if you're dead and you um, have an undersoul, then you're a ghost like Ellie. Um, if you have an oversoul when you're dead, you're a poltergeist because the over the oversoul is your your base Darker instincts yeah. yeah yeah and then if you're living and you lose your oversoul you become a vampire and if you lose your undersoul you become a zombie like just such a clever way to just integrate yeah. everyone into it so you've got you still got your living and you're dead it's just everyone has two souls and if you lose one of them you become something else but it also it's lays just... a foundation for where it's going to go beyond because we haven't seen poltergeist yet Nope. So it, 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 was, it was two pages was it spread across, was it? It was like a double page yeah. spread, was it? Two pages lays a whole groundwork for characters we're seeing through the story. And we'll be viewed that's so clever just to do it on two pages. But I, I agree. And but again, they should have went with that and added, give us more of that story type of thing. Because again, that part was clever, but the rest of the story didn't fit into like the cleverness. I know that's not a, a smart <laughs> word to say, but you know what I'm trying to say? I am not clever. Like, it didn't... <laughs> that the whole way through the book. It gave us, like, two pages of, like, this is really clever. So where's the rest of it? You know, are you smart or are you not? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's just run with that then. Give us more of that. Beef that out slightly more. Um, Maybe that will come in, in volume two. And obviously, we, we know now where... I keep calling her Ellie. Gwen stands with her undersoul or oversoul. What, what's she again? She's a, oh, she's a zombie, but she loses her undersoul? Yes, so she's only got her oversoul. Uh, she's only got an oversoul, okay. which is... So that's why she's craving the undersoul. She's craving the memories of people. That's why she has to eat brains. But then was this guy saying that if you eat brains, if you eat... What was it? If you kill people who aren't just already dead and eat their brains, you'll somehow develop... That is back again or something. Well, he made it seem like if you kill 
and eat air and eat brains, then you'll get your memories back of who you were. Because I mean, he he had his skin tone back. He wasn't pale mm -hmm. like Gwen. She's she's only eating to survive. Well, he was he was eating. bandaged up, wasn't he, at the start? And then obviously killed the guy at whatever, and then he became dashing and handsome and whatever else. But he did With also the... take a magic elixir. He said, oh, "Okay." He, he had all the markings mention... as well, didn't he? He had like the eye on his forehead and some of the like. Obviously, now we know further on they're like Egyptian, maybe Egyptian markings. Yep. Maybe someone's grabbed him and tortured him, but he did make it seem like if she kills, maybe she'll get more of her life back. But I don't think she has to kill. I think she just has to eat more often. She's literally mm. eating once a month to stop herself from going full Romero, like brain dead shambling zombie. So if she ate more frequently, although she can't without killing because she's decided I'll work at the graveyard and I'll be able to eat when a fresh body comes in. Because if you notice as well, she works at a place that is 100% decomposable. <laughs> they don't embalm the bodies. So I'm guessing she picked that place on purpose so that yes. uh, the brains uh, yeah. in there. This all makes sense. I didn't then, that. The other thing is, I, I have a problem. These are small things. I, I sometimes overthink. And so she's obviously digging the graves and there's like four other fellas with her. And every time they're leaving, they're going for drinks or going wherever. Oh, I forgot my handbag. I forgot this and that. I have yeah. to go back. And they made a comment to say, like, one day you'll you'll forget, or you'll remember to bring your things with you or something. But like, why does one just say, "Well, wait, I have five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I can oh, wait here on you. I'll uh, I'll come with you. I'll go with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's uh, these are things I overthink. That's not really important. But I feel like if you're going to I tell us, that, if you're going to tell us, like, you know, I'll have to go back at my stuff two or three mm -hmm. times in the story. Well, then, you know. You have to kind of do something with it. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's just show her do that once, and then another time show her walk outside, and as if she's walking with them, and then she goes a different way and goes back into the cemetery. Because yeah, doing the same thing every night, they're gonna they're gonna pick up on that pretty quick, aren't they? It's just small things like that it makes me overthink it. Um, yeah, but I, I don't like the I, I, I like the way she like lives in a crypt, and Ellie comes and hangs out. That's cool. I like it. Mm. Yeah. The premise is great. The foundation for the story is great. And like I said, if I was reading this monthly, I wouldn't have stopped. I wouldn't I wouldn't have packed it up. I would have continued until the series had run its course. Um, but as a trade, you can't just tell someone to here read this trade if you want to get a feel for this book, because it's not fair, is it? It just doesn't give you that. You'd need no, the doesn't. entire omnibus or oversized, whatever they've got. I think my only concern is 28 issues, isn't it? This full run, yeah. In yeah. five, in five issues, she was dealing with one brain that she had. So just working it out, if that's how they're going to go with it, you're only going to get five people, maybe six. Yeah. Personalities you approach over this whole season, a whole series. Sorry, not season. It's show yet again. <laughs> this whole series, five people. Which the premise yeah. of this story is based on that. I'm expected to see double figures and this pushing a few issues at a time. But yeah, like I feel like she would have in a, in a cemetery where they, 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 it's all natural decomposing or whatever, she would have um, a buffet of brains to eat. Um, so she, so why is it just one? It don't mean she should go in that crypt and have like brains light. They have a freezer with like brains. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that, there's some comedy. Go in and have a freezer with brains. No. Do you know what I mean? Just... Yeah. See, I mean, and you said you haven't seen the TV show. That's exactly what the TV show is like. She keeps them in ice cube trays and she really? labels them up. Yeah, because they eat. She, she she takes skills from people. So when she eats the brains of this Chinese guy, who's like um, he's in the mob and he can do kung fu. So she keeps some of his brain for when she's going to need to use Kung Fu again. So she just keeps it's them like, and labels like them. like the Matrix uh, with brains. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Batman's, Batman's utility belt of brains. Yeah, yeah. it's just an ice, cream, ice, an ice cube tray in the freezer. <laughs> all different brains. I had to get all different skills. It's like, it's like Go Go Gadget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go Go Gadget it's... brain Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I know, uh, no, yeah, I, 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 it has me too. I, I, I now have no appetite to watch the show. No, no, right. all, all for brains, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, that put me off well, brains. Yes. <laughs> do you have an appetite to tell me your final thoughts and scores at the very least? 
Yes, sure. Sir. Yes, I do. All right, then let's get into the verdict. And we'll start with Martin tonight. Yeah. So I, I did find this fun. I thought the premise was really good. You know, I thought some of the characters were a little flat. I did find, um, what was his name? The Egyptian man. I can't think of his name now. I'm on. Uh, I'm on. I found him quite interesting. I like the idea of his backstory coming from Egypt. I like, you know, Egyptian mythology. It led somewhere. It engaged me a little bit there. But unfortunately, I think the problem with this whole volume is that the premise and the ideas were good, but the execution was just not very good story-wise. The artwork, I did say originally, I like that 60s style of like, like pixelated thing that's really cool it might be of this tv show or um is it archer it gave me that vibe when i watched it oh, yeah. um but unfortunately you gotta judge it the whole for me i did not enjoy this as much as i did resident alien because that's what i'm putting it up against unfortunately so i'm gonna give it a 5.5 5. Oof. Hmm. Oof. phil <sighs> So, similar to what we've said, Martin just said, the concept was good. The foundation was good. You, you've got stuff there that they, they could run with and beef out and, and give us more uh, more substantial story or something. Um, the art was okay. I, I I do feel like hearing Mike Allred and the work he's done for Marvel, I feel like I, I expected more with the art, but did kind of fall flat for me slightly. Um, not that it's bad, I liked it, it's just I, th I was expecting more. Um, but it was okay, it was grand. Um, talking this through, we mentioned earlier, like I, I now feel deflated to find out what I actually liked enough to score it well enough. And similar to the other volume ones for indie books, I was kind of going a similar score. I was sitting there around six, but I think I'm going to lower that now. Like, I, I now I have no interest in reading on, and I don't want to watch the show. I like Gwen as a character, but I can't tell you why. Like, other than her saying nice attitude, but I can't really tell you why I like her. I'm going with five. Middle of the road, it's fine. I told the story, it served a point, but this was an introduction. Give us all the characters, but maybe volume two, they'll play with their toys, but play with them a little bit here first. Give us that hook, what it's lacking. So it's it's a five for me. Uh, Scott? I agree with Phil in a way um, about the you know, like I enjoyed it, but I like I enjoyed Gwen, but I didn't. I don't know why. Um, yeah, uh, the the art was just not hitting it for me. The only thing I liked about the art was um, the facial expressions. That was that was pretty much it. I thought I thought they were done really well, um, but um, we've rewritten this story quite a bit in this chat um so so that bodes really well um and the fact that we haven't touched on at all the vampire story just shows how unnecessary it was um and how much you know yeah like both of you know shane and martin just pulled really shocked faces um going oh yeah we forgot about that because it it felt like it didn't add anything really to the story as a whole and i wish they just slowed it down um and just just let us enjoy the characters that we were introduced to originally and don't just instantly add more in um so yeah so yeah decent read some things i liked some things i didn't like uh yeah like phil i'm going middle of the road i'm going for a five as well Oof. um so for me the one who picked it I'm going to go 10. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I did. I, I don't regret reading it. Um, that seems to be like my anything above a five for me is I didn't regret reading it. And I didn't. Um, I would like to read on. I'm not in a rush to read on. I would happily read on if it was picked for a sequels month or, you know, a Herd's Choice or something like that. But I won't go out of my way to read it. I'm sure I will at some point pick up volume two and give it a go. I did enjoy the art. Surprisingly, I'm normally quite fussy with my art, but I really did enjoy the pixels and the bright just dots in the background to show 
that retro style that was something that i something that just brings back memories for me personally as a reader as a massive fan of the tv show and then picking this this is nothing like the tv show so i have to be fair and i feel really mean but, but some trades just don't work as trades if you're just going to stop a story and not end it and not have some closure at the end i can't class that as a full story this is just five issues of a book um, but i am going to be a little bit more generous than phil and scott and martin and i'm going to give this a six i think yes. just a smidge more uh, I do have one score from uh, Liam. He has read along but couldn't make it to the show. He did send me a score in earlier on, if, uh, if you want to know what that is. Yep. Yes. So he said, uh, as someone who hasn't... Uh, sorry. As someone who wasn't the biggest fan of the TV series, I was really hoping this would be better. Unfortunately, it's another case of the show being better than the book, at least when it's based on Volume 1, 5 out of 10. Oh. So we're all in so the same ballpark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, scores are in then. No more scores in the chat. Then we would just got the one score from Liam. So heard average, five, five out of ten. Easy peasy. Adding that onto Phillips five, Shane six, my five, and Martin's five point five. This gives us an average of five point three. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. So where does that land uh, on on the leaderboard? We're, we're pretty confident it doesn't land on the top ten, <laughs> but uh, we'll. Uh, we'll we'll show you anyway um there it is there's a top 10 uh it's got to beat a 7.5 to get it's onto getting, that top 10 now getting tough to get to the top 10 no yeah. it is Definitely. it is so where does it go on the rest of the leaderboard 5.3 takes Oof. it to joint 19th with the naughty list and snot girl volume 2 Oof. there we go Oof. there we go um Right, Herd's Choice. Do we want to do Herd's Choice or do we want to do what is Kev drawing for us next week? What do you want to do first? Do what's Kev drawing and ask anyone in the chat to pop a book in that you'd like us to read next week. You've got a few seconds while we show you what Kev's about to draw for yes. us. Yes, uh, we do have, we've had four people send in choices from the various socials, so we've got that. Uh, but seven o'clock tomorrow night, like clockwork, Kevin is showing us how to draw... I zombie showing us how to draw Gwen slash Liv. Uh, well, it says Gwen from I zombie, but could be Liv as well. Same person. Uh, but yeah, showing us how to draw uh, Gwen from this series as well. Uh, Looks quite good. I've That's just really noticed, dark. like, does Kev do this in every thumbnail where he has his like avatar like drawing yeah. a comic? Oh, have I agree. Uh, uh, doing different things. And the the cool yeah. thing is in this one, the avatar that's drawing the comic is his comic. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's, it's just comic. Uh, it's the last time here, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Uh, so there we go. So though, that's what we got coming up uh, tomorrow on the Nerdo channel. So all we got left to do now is to show off what we've got for our herd's choice. So we've had four sent in. So Kev has just sent a message in as well, saying uh, that his herd's choice is Astonishing X Men. Nice. We've had Brian from the Facebooks ask for Homesick Pilots Volume One. We've had Pete message us on WhatsApp asking for Thanos wins. No. And we've also uh, got one from Liam as well, and he wants uh, Batman versus Big B. He's been asking oh. for that for a few weeks, so he wants yes. that. So let's get uh, let's get our wheel on. There it is. Okay, I think we, we, we need to go. some X-Men in our life. So I'm going with that. We do. We, here we go. Right. Mm -hmm. Full screen. Batman here we go. Me. Good luck, everyone. Was it going to be... <laughs> oh 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 oh! What is it? Oh, oh. there we go. What is it? It's Kev. Kev has won with astonishing X Men, and that does mean he also did say in his message, "If it's picked, I'll draw Wolverine for next week's draw along." Nice, perfect. That's amazing. Ooh. Thank you very much. So, Kev, uh, that's awesome. Can't wait to do that. Yeah, uh, we may actually get, and we haven't had a good X Men book in a while. Uh, so it's going to be. Um, we had one at all. Old, Old Man House Logan. Yeah. Oh, Old House Man of, Logan. Okay. House of M was yeah. good, surely. Yeah. Uh, House of M was alright. Onslaught though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Peak nerd. Herd. <laughs> 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 
There we go. I've, I've heard good things about this. Yeah. Yeah. Back to you, Shane. <laughs> So, yes, that's what we're reading next week. Astonishing X-Men, I assume, Volume 1. Um, I don't know the yeah. year at the moment. So it's going to be early to mid-2000s, I would assume, for Astonishing X-Men, around about the same time as Astonish um, Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, Astonishing Spider-Man, the one uh, we read. Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. I assume maybe. it's around that time. But we will definitely post it on our Instagram so you can read along for next week. And yes, Kev, of so. course, is going to get some goodies in the post. So yes, so that was the Nerd Herd comic book show. My choice, and I'm sorry for that pick. I won't do it again. No apologies. <laughs> you can't do it again. We picked it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing left to do now, but get your waves out. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you.